So last night, I was talking to my wife's friends about getting up super early in the morning to drive from Springfield into Arkansas and come do some trail running. And I think they all thought I was a little bit crazy. But for me, it's something that's super exciting. And today, I not only want to show you the trail that I'm running on, I also want to talk about the reasons why I like to go out into nature and run. Today I'm in Arkansas at the Pigeon Roost Trail and I'm about to go on a trail run. I've never been here before, but it gets great reviews on all trails. I've already flown the drone a little bit. The area surrounding it is fantastic. There's a beautiful lake and I cannot wait to get down there. Today I not only want to talk about why I like to run, but maybe some of the reasons why it might appeal to you as well. Let's go check out the trail. I just started the trail and so far it is fantastic. So reason number one for getting outside and being active is obvious. It's just to enjoy nature. I think there's real value in getting outdoors on a regular basis. But honestly, it's not the main benefit of trail running. I think there are a lot of other things that actually are more important to why I enjoy it so much. The nature aspect is really just a silver lining. One of the things I think I enjoy the most is the planning. Planning where you're gonna go and planning out your route and everything that it's gonna take to make it happen is really a great part of the process. This week, I'm staying in Springfield, Missouri, but right now, I'm running in Arkansas. It's over two hours away. The reason I'm here is because of all the planning that I did. I started off by looking at the maps, looking for stuff close to Springfield, but over time, started kind of expanding that diameter that I was looking in to find even better and better routes. I love to get onto Google Maps and all trails and just check out what's available, read the reviews, look at pictures, and sometimes find something that maybe nobody else has done before. I'm always looking for a loop so that I can cover as much new ground as possible on a single run. And so far, a couple miles into this route, I think it did a great job finding something that was perfect for this trip. Now, of course, beyond just picking the trail, there's all the logistics that go into it. Getting there, what you need to pack, all of it makes it part of the fun, it's part of the adventure, and it's one of the reasons why I love going out and doing biking and running in new places. It gives you a chance to have a project and have something that you're working toward. The next one is pretty obvious, but definitely worth mentioning, and that is simply the health and fitness benefits of getting outside and being active. Now, of course, it's obvious that being healthy is a benefit to you, and a lot of people would look at it and say, oh, I'm gonna have a longer life. And while extending your life is obviously something that most people are looking to do, it's not really something that's gonna motivate most people. Just look at all the people that smoke. They know it's shortening their life most likely. They do it anyway. Ultimately, what I think is a lot more compelling is not the extension of your life. It's increasing the quality of your life. If you've been really fit and you slide back into a state where you're unhealthy again, you can definitely feel it. Every day is worse, every day is harder. Because your fitness, your physical health, is tied in so tightly to your mental health. This is such an amazing place. I'm loving this view, and uh, I think this is worth the price of admission, which by the way, was zero dollars. That brings us to reason number four, which is the analytics. 
Running and biking really give you countless ways to measure your performance. How you've been eating, how you've been sleeping, or anything else that might affect you, it all shows up in the numbers. Now, I try not to obsess about it too much, but again, I like the analytics. I like paying attention to my watch. I wear a heart rate monitor strap because I like to see the accurate heart rate data. And if you are tracking your performance, what numbers do you pay the most attention to? For me, when I'm running, it's gotta be speed and distance, of course, as number one, but in terms of the more interesting analytics, it's heart rate, it's elevation, and it's cadence. But how about you? Are you tracking your performance? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, tied in with the analytics is number five, and that is the products. Whether it's all the tech gear, the heart rate monitors, the watches, the headphones, or things like sunglasses and all the clothing, I simply like checking out what's new and trying out new things. I love shopping. Now, none of it makes me a better runner. While the products don't directly make me more fit or a better athlete, they do make things a little bit more fun. And indirectly, that has big benefits. Today, I've got on brand new trail running shoes. Honestly, they're just a new colorway of shoes I already own, but it put a little extra pep in my step. Didn't make me any faster, but it made me enjoy running more. By being fun, it supports the overall habit and process of going out and getting fit and staying active. More fun means more attention, and that means I'm going to put more into staying fit and being active. My list is certainly a personal one, and so I know it's gonna be controversial, especially things like being excited about products, but the reality is it does help drive me. That brings us to number six, which is the emotional state that you're in when you're out running. I oftentimes like to listen to podcasts, books, or music when I'm out running and biking. But I think what I like the most is really the meditative, almost zen-like state you can get in, particularly when you're trail running. There's a part of your mind that's gotta be continuously focused on what's happening to the trail, how even it is, and what you need to do with your feet in order to stay upright. That mental focus allows you to push a lot of your anxiety and other issues aside. Your mind gets focused on putting one foot in front of the other, and it takes away any of the focus from any of the discomfort that you're feeling. Paying attention to your footwork and looking at what's happening on the trail also has that distracting benefit that you can never get on something like a treadmill. It's one of the reasons why a treadmill is so boring. And everybody knows these are rock hard times. I gotta make it through. The rock hard times I don't know what it is They think I'm gonna try They don't know what they need to fear The surest sign that the end is coming We're now over three quarters of the way through the run So we better move on to number seven And that is the progress In number two, I talked about planning And that's really more specific to the individual activity That you're gonna go out and do, especially when it comes to traveling, picking routes, and that sort of thing. But progress, and that's progress against a goal, is something completely different. I think setting goals and working to achieve them is one of the most important parts to being happy and successful. When I first tried running and realized just how epically terrible I was, I figured, okay, this is not for me. But that's where I was completely wrong. When it comes to something like going out, like I do on the weekend, trail running by myself, I'm not racing against any competitor except for myself. And I'm racing against both my past self and my expectations that I'm putting on myself. And if I set my goals effectively, I'm always able to continually improve, meeting those goals and raising the bar over and over. So it doesn't matter that I'm a bad runner. What matters is that I'm a better runner than I used to be. This 
smokestack spitting black soot into the sooty sky. All right, we're now approaching the final mile, and it looks like it's probably all uphill for the rest of the way. So that's a perfect time to talk about the final reason I want to mention today as to why I love getting out, being active, trail running, biking, and all the little adventures I go out and do. And that is the suffering itself. I think in general, we spend most of our lives seeking comfort. And after all, why not? I mean, what's the point of living in a Western society and being wealthy if not to enjoy comfort? The problem is like with anything, after you experience it too much, you habituate to it. It almost becomes a drug where it no longer satisfies you. There's a reason why we have so much luxury in the world now and also so much depression. The two go hand in hand. Too much luxury, if that's all you're experiencing, it really can lead to bad mental states. Your biggest achievements in life are not gonna be the things that come easy. They're gonna be the things that you work on. Once you realize that you can take that amount of pressure and that amount of pain, you know that you can tackle anything your day-to-day -day life throws at you. And while most of the list was made up of fun stuff, being out in nature, doing the analytics, shopping, all that kind of stuff, I do think it's fitting that the final item is suffering because without it, none of the other stuff has meaning. If everything is good, nothing is. That's it, that takes us to the end of the list. Hopefully you enjoyed coming along with me for this run. Uh, leave a comment, a like, all that kind of stuff that they tell you to do on YouTube. Otherwise, no one else will ever see the video. See